Amen. We are all marching to Zion together. I want to welcome everyone here this morning. We are glad that you're here. We look forward to all the Lord has to share with us this morning as we lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ together. Uh, well, this is kind of a special day. As all of you know, we are having our church conference uh, shortly after the service, about 1030. And uh, an important vote will be taken at that time. So please continue to be in prayer, even through our service, uh, for this important event in, a, in the life of our church. I have kind of a special announcement to make. We are happy to welcome our district superintendent here with us this morning. If you will stand, we have a special gift for you. Uh, the altar flowers here this morning were given by our prayer team, and uh, they're given in your honor, and we thank you for your loving and faithful service to our church. So thank you very much. God bless you. I think that's all I have by way of announcement, so I'll turn it over to Lynette. Thank you, Pastor Randy. And good morning again to everybody. It's so good to see so many people here this morning. There's a lot of people I haven't seen in, in a while. And it's, it's so good to see all of y'all. First thing I need to do is just to remind everyone that we do want a record of our, everyone's attendance today. So if you would, um, the registration pad is up at at the end of the pew, if you would pick it up, sign it, and pass it down. So we'll make sure to get everybody's name on, on the list. Um, if you're visiting for the first time this morning, we welcome you. Um, there is a visitor card uh, in the pew rack. If you would fill it out and put your name on it and you put this on your clothing, then after service, uh, we would love to visit with you and have fellowship with you and, and we'll know who you are by calling your name. Uh, also, if you have a prayer request, there are uh, little blue cards also in the pew racks. If you would fill that out with that person's name, if you have the address, put that on there too, and then our prayer team will pray for that person. And also, if we have an address, we'll send them a card to let them know that we prayed for them. Um, let's see. Let me look in here. The announcements uh, in our bulletin. Uh, the Warren Food Bank is taking boxes of stovetop stuffing. Um, of course, the church conference is at 10.30 a.m. Everyone is encouraged to attend and find out the results of the vote. Uh, our family ministries will host a covered dish dinner at the conclusion of the church conference, so please stay for that. It's always good. Um, <clears throat> the handbells begin their new season with us next Sunday, October the 23rd. Please join us for this unique worship experience. You will be blessed. Methodist men will meet for their monthly breakfast and fellowship at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, October the 22nd. And then last but not least, trunk or treat. Um, on Halloween evening on, at 5.30 to 7, we will host our largest community event of the year. We usually host well over 200 people. That's a lot of candy. <laughs> Amen. Please sign up to volunteer. Um, you know, your de decorated trunk to pass out candy to children from all over this area. We also need donations of bags of candy because we always run out of candy. Um, is there any other announcements anybody has? Anybody? Okay. If not, we'll go to the call to preparation. Rejoice, O holy, church, o holy Church, exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. Amen. At this time, the communion rail is open for a time of prayer. If you would like to come forward and pray for our worship service, 
uh, you may do so at this time. God challenges us to choose and to the, enter into the Holy of Holies and experience His presence for ourselves as we worship together. So we'll begin with a time of prayer. The communion rail is now open. bow together for a few moments of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for another wonderful opportunity to join our hearts together and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your presence here with us. We commit and dedicate this service to you. In everything we do, may Jesus Christ receive all the honor and the glory and the praise for it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in our worship with our opening hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. Let us stand together as we sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
please remain standing as we do our affirmation of faith. It's number 888. Uh, Just please read responsibly and it will be on the screen. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ Christ died died for for our sins, was buried, was raised raised on the third day, day, appeared first to the women, and then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We We believe believe Jesus is the Christ, Christ, the anointed anointed one of God, the the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. seated. We have come to that part of our service where we share our joys and our concerns. Uh, We have quite a few concerns um, on the back of the bulletin on our church family and also our family and friends. So uh, just be sure and reflect on those names this week as as we go through another week of these people having uh, some medical problems and some others. Uh, Are there any new ones that we need to put on the prayer list this morning? I have one. Um, I have a a little neighbor lady that uh, she's, she's 99 years old. She's on hospice and um, she's, at the end of her life. And um, yeah, mo- most people, y'all here know my sister that sits with people. Well, she's sitting with this lady. And so that lady is really lucky to, to have her, which is, I mean, we've known her all, our, all of our lives. So she's so glad to have my sister there with her. But she's a wonderful lady. Her name is Frank. Uh, uh, Ruth Franks. She's actually already on the prayer list, but um, but she she's at she's at the getting to the end of her life. Is there is there anyone else um, concerns? Well, I know we have everybody has concerns on their heart that we may not want to share, but we just need to pray for each other and all of those prayers that we have in in our hearts. How about joys? I see some hands. I have a big joy. Uh, Last week, even though I was not able to participate, Kairos number 41 uh, happened at the Stiles unit. And 42 uh, inmates got to participate and experience uh, the love of Christ through the weekend. Uh, I've got a report from the weekend leader Uh, and he says we were blessed to have two new men serve who were ex-offenders so ex-offenders on the Kairos team that's unusual so that's a blessing to them and a blessing to the participants in the group Uh, they used another one as a backup for two days to cover situations that came up when people couldn't be there Heard from many serving uh, that participation was above and beyond the past Kairos retreats. A lot of the inmates were a lot more uh, participating and introspective of their own lives. 
We had one participant give his life to Christ in front of everyone, and many others made decisions to become more involved in their spiritual lives. We had one participant who said because of Kairos, he called his brother who he hadn't spoken to in 32 years. His brother answered the phone and spoke with him and says he is now planning on coming to visit his brother in prison. Amen. The chaplain took pictures of many of the posters. Posters, if you don't know, with the after each talk, the inmates draw posters representing what they hear and understand. And they're, paste, they're taped up on the wall. At the end, nothing can leave, so they're all torn up. Oh. But the, because it becomes contraband at that point. The okay. chaplain took pictures so he could keep them in the chapel and other people could see them. Um, had a great closing and many participants came up to the microphone to speak about their experience with Kairos. We wait to see how many will show up for the instructional this Saturday, which was yesterday. Uh, they always have the following week, they're taught how to do the prayer and share because they continue every week meeting with their table family group to support and encourage and keep their walk in Christ going. Carlos Falau will be the leader of Kairos 42, which is scheduled for April 20th through 23rd, and the instructional re reunion will be April 29th. So that gives us something to start praying about now. There's Amen. a team that will be put together for Kairos 42. There are 42 inmates who will be chosen to be participants. And we can start praying for the leaders, for the team, and for the participants at this time. So I, I, as much as I can promise, I'm going to be a lot more involved this spring. And we will be uh, doing the prayer chain. We will be involved in any way we can. So I just appreciate your prayers most of all. And any other help we can come up with at that time. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for sharing that with us. That is that's a blessing. That's a joy. Um, Tim, go ahead. Uh, we uh, successfully made our way back from places afar. Really good <laughs> visit. Nice, cool weather. Fiftieth. Uh, 50th year class reunion, and there's more of us on the right side of the sod than the wrong side. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> the best thing that has happened to us probably this year, Papa, Elliot Rose Warnick came to Texas September 20th. She's beautiful. Her big brother and her big sister are crazy about her. And they're all doing very, very well. Amen. And hopefully she's the last. I'm so blessed. Since uh, 1953, I've been celebrating birthdays with this young lady here. And uh, my birthday wish for her. Many more healthy, happy ones here in Wildwood. Amen. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the weather, again, has been so beautiful. We've had so many pretty mornings and cool mornings. It's just been so good. We don't usually get that many cool mornings, it seems like, here in southeast Texas like we have had. But we need some rain, and I think we might get some rain this week. So... Amen. So, if if that's all, everybody, um, Pastor Andy, I'll give it back to you. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to gather together as the body of Christ and to come into your presence in prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to have an audience with the creator of the universe. We thank you and praise you for your presence here with us this morning. We recognize that we are not worthy of your amazing love for us. So we humbly come before your throne. We confess to you all of our sins. We ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse us in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. 
prepare our hearts to be the disciples that you've called us to be. And Lord, our hearts are burdened this morning for those in need among us, especially for the request spoken here, as well as the unspoken request on our hearts, and also all of those listed in our bulletin. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort, and peace to your people today. We thank you that you are our great physician. You know and understand these needs even before we bring them before your throne. Your Holy Spirit is already at work moving among us, touching and healing hearts and lives. So we thank you for the many answers to prayer that we have experienced as individuals and together as a church. We thank you for all these many blessings upon us. And now as Jesus taught his disciples, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward for our morning offering. And let's bow together as we pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all your many blessings upon us, for providing for our every need, walking with us moment by moment, day by day. And so we thank you now for this opportunity to give back to you. Bless these, our tithes and offerings, and may they be used to bring honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, any children that might be here this morning. There he is, our one and only. 
to come forward for our children's message. Did you hear that note? That was middle C on the organ. Now, this morning, well, in fact, every time you come to church, we have a piano that plays over here and an organ that plays over here. Do you play an instrument? Mm, nah, not really. Okay. Well, that's so that if I asked you to get up and go over to the organ and play middle C, you probably have trouble finding it. Oh, you play a little guitar. Well, that's good. So you know a little bit about instruments. Well, you know, there's one important lesson when it comes to learning and playing an instrument. Barry, about how long have you been playing the organ? Pop question here. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. And Kay, how long have you been playing? Yeah, that's right, she does. So they've been playing a long time, and you know how they get so good at playing? One thing. Practice. They have to practice, practice, practice all the time so they can uh, stay good at playing their instrument. And so practice is very important. So in our scripture that we're going to read in just a few minutes, Jesus is telling the disciples there's one thing that they need to do over and over and over again in order to be good at it, in order to be effective. And that would be... Prayer. Praying is something that we have to do regularly and never stop and never give up. And that's what our scripture is about today. So it's important for us to recognize that praying isn't something we do just once and then we forget about it and go on our way. God wants us to pray. In fact, the Bible says pray continually. Pray all the time. Never give up. Even though sometimes when we pray for something that we really feel like is important and it doesn't happen, we get discouraged. Huh? Sometimes God doesn't answer prayer the way we want him to. But God tells us what's most important is don't give up and to keep praying. So I think that's a good lesson for us to learn. Just like with the piano and the organ, prayer takes practice, practice, practice. Let's bow for a prayer. Lord, we thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you for learning about prayer and help us to continue to always keep praying and asking you and bringing our burdens to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You can go back to your seat. Uh, for our hymn of praise, we're going to do things a little different this morning. Our hymn of praise on eagle's wings in our hymnal on page 143 is just the chorus. But I love the whole song on eagle's wings. So we're going to try and learn it in a different way this morning. Uh, we've got a video that we're going to show where they'll be singing the words, but the words are up on the screen. So we're going to stand together, we're going to play the video, and hope you'll start learning the whole song of On Eagle's Wings. Let's stand as we sing together. on the video it's coming there's a little bit of it okay turn it up just a little bit like I said practice 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 we'll get there
to sing. a good try, I'll have to admit, it came across a lot clearer on my computer than it did on the screen, so I apologize for the words. We'll work on that for next time, but it was uh, good to hear the whole song and not just the chorus. I appreciate your patience. That is beautiful. Thank you, Before, before I ask y'all to stand for, the, for God's holy word, I want to say thank you to Kay. That song that you did, this shout, shout to the Lord, that's one of my favorites. And you played it more beautifully today, I think, than I've ever heard it. So thank you so much. Amen. It's a blessing and another joy. <laughs> Amen. Our scripture this morning is Luke 18. 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later He said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she will not wear me out continually, continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust just says. 
And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Open our spiritual eyes and ears that we may see and hear your truth for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I read a story this week about a pastor in a Baptist church in Florida. And uh, he shared this story. He was looking for a secluded place one afternoon to work on his sermon. And he didn't want to be interrupted in his office or around the church office. So he found the most secluded spot he could find in the church, the sound booth. So he goes into the sound booth and he spreads out his stuff and he starts working on his sermon. In the middle of his work, all of a sudden he hears two loud voices. And there are two boys, teenagers who were laughing loudly and also cussing as they come into the sanctuary. One boy says to the other one, Why don't you go up to that pulpit where that blankety-blank preacher gives his sermon? And then the other one said, While I'm up there, I think I'll ask those blankety-blank deacons to take up an offering so I can buy myself a new car. The pastor was horrified, and he wasn't sure exactly what to do, how to address that uh, in that given situation. But then he realized he was in the sound booth. So he turned up the sound the loudest it would go, and suddenly a a voice boomed into the entire sanctuary. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. And it scared those boys so bad they took off running. Sometime later, as the pastor is telling this story to one of those deacons, he said, you should have seen their faces. They ran out of there so fast, all I saw was two shirt tails flying around the corner of the building. Then the pastor adds, tongue in cheek, You know, those boys are now on the mission field having heard the call of God that day. (laughs) Not. When I read that story, though, it reminded me of something that I saw quite a few years ago in a previous church I pastored. I used to have to drive back and forth on this uh, main highway uh, back and forth to the church. And they had this, I uh, passed a big Baptist church that has this great big sign out front. And normally it just had, you know, kind of newsy things on it. But then one week, as I was driving by, the sign said, Don't make me come down there. Sincerely, God. And I ha- kind of got a chuckle from that and went on my way. Ne- the next week... As I go by, there's a new sign. Let's meet at my house Sunday before the game. I'll let you think about that for a minute. Sincerely, God. Some of you may have stayed up awful late last night to watch the Astros finally finish. What was it, the 18th inning or something like that? So, um, anyway, but mostly we have trouble when the Cowboys are playing at noon. And uh, sometimes church is uh, not always first on our minds. So then the next week I drive by, and the big sign out front says, 
What part of thou shalt not didn't you understand? Sincerely, God. And I started chuckling and I realized I need to write these things down. One time when I have a big sign in a church, I'm going to use these, they're great. And then the next week it said, we need to talk. Sincerely, God. And then the last one said, you think it's hot here, you better ask God about it. So I thought that was pretty good. And it reminded me of our scripture this week. Jesus is telling a short parable that has a lot of fascinating and yet some confusing tidbits that leave us wondering just exactly what was Jesus trying to tell us. The first thing I thought of was, I wonder what that judge was thinking all those times that woman came and wanted justice and he just blew her off. Because the scripture tells us she came repeatedly. And the first thing I thought of was that sign that judge probably thought, don't make me come down there. But then he relented and finally gave her the justice that she was so desperately and persistently asking for. So our parable is a wonderful story about not giving up, about persistence in prayer. But now let's talk about what I remember Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. Jesus continues in verse 7. Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. So this is not only a story about persistence in prayer. It's also a story about receiving God's justice, about God's plan for his world. In effect, this story is telling us God is saying, don't make me come down there. He will not ignore the cries of those who are being oppressed, those who are being exploited, those who are being abused. He will hear their prayers and he will not forever abide in that injustice. He will come and bring about his perfect justice. So that's what justice is, because that's a very important message our scripture gives us. Not only in our scripture this morning, but all throughout the Old Testament, the prophets were definitely messengers of God's justice. So this woman in Jesus' parable came to the judge and pleaded with him to give her justice. Someone was doing her wrong. We don't know what the issue is specifically. And the judge finally heeded her request. Jesus says that the judge of the universe is like that judge. Even though we don't see it or understand it or know that it's even happening around us, God is constantly intervening in the affairs of this world and is enforcing his justice, so often justice that we never even recognize. But one day when his justice comes to fruition, the world will be set right the way he designed it. But unfortunately, what we see nowadays isn't always God's justice. Basically, it's humanity's idea of justice. And unfortunately, when humans get involved in anything, they always tend to some degree to mess it up. Because oftentimes we put ourselves at the center of the universe. We are creating justice that we think is proper and right, but oftentimes it is not according 
to God's will, and sometimes God isn't even considered in the equation. But our scripture this morning tells us without a doubt, God will intervene in his time, and he will send out his justice just as he did for that widow. In fact, biblically, it is impossible to overstate this truth. God hates injustice. It is a constant theme throughout the scripture, but particularly in the writings of the prophets. And here is what's important to recognize. Even though we feel like we're waiting too long for God's justice to take place, when in reality God's justice is always at work, but we don't always have eyes to see. So let's look at verse 7 and part of verse 8. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. But when Jesus makes this statement, we're kind of left thinking, well, God's justice didn't come very quickly for that widow she had to go back over and over and over again. She had to wait a long time for that judge to finally take action on her case. But when God's justice comes, it will be full and it will be complete. But the one thing that's hard for us as human beings to understand is that God's timetable is not our timetable. We know from the book of Revelations that things will get worse before they get better. That period of terrible trial coming when Satan will engage his full army to defeat God and God's people, the casualties of war at that time will be very high. Revelation even talks about the martyrs surrounding the throne of God pleading for God's people. I have a newspaper article on my desk that was printed in the Beaumont Enterprise recently about a very conservative free Methodist church in Seattle, Washington. At that college, I'm sorry, it's a free Methodist college, not church, in Seattle. At that college, a group of their professors and students filed a lawsuit against the college. Even though these professors and students signed a covenant agreement with the college about abiding by the teachings and belief of the school, these professors, some of whom were hired uh, to address a diversity requirement by the state, began teaching a theology that was in conflict with the school's beliefs. The lawyers for the college said, The lawsuit filed against them claims that the school has broken city and state laws concerning civil rights, LGBTQ issues, and gender practices. The lawyers for the college also said that unfortunately in our court system today, religious freedom is now taking a back seat to some of these other issues. So I think as we apply that to our church, we have to understand that even though we might be seeking to follow what God's word tells us, there are battles that we will not always win. Yet, we know from our scripture, God will intervene in his time and he will ultimately be victorious. So now let's look at the last part of verse 8, which just kind of pops out and seemingly doesn't have much to do with what the scripture is talking about. The last part of verse 8, And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Kind of an interesting question that Jesus poses here. But I think what Jesus is And as we see through the other Gospels and all the way through this Gospel of Luke, 
Jesus is constantly trying to prepare the disciples for his crucifixion. He is constantly giving them little warnings about what is to come. So I think uh, what Jesus was doing here was warning the disciples that what is about to take place is crucifixion will look like a total and complete failure on Jesus' part when he is crucified. At that point, the disciples may think, was all this for nothing? Was my faith in vain? But what Jesus also wants them to know is, there will be ultimate victory. There will be resurrection. And in the end, God, as he promises us in this parable, will have total and complete victory. So I think when we look at the totality of this parable, I believe that this parable and then Jesus' response to God's justice should be viewed through the lens of Matthew chapter 7. There Jesus says, if our earthly fathers know how to provide good things for us, how much more will our heavenly Father provide good things for his children? God's justice, no matter how long it takes, will provide the best gift for his children. We will be rewarded beyond our wildest dreams. But just like the widow, we have to wait on God's timetable. Let's bow together for prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word, for the message from this parable, and the comfort we can take in knowing that your justice will finally come. We thank you and praise you for all your many blessings. We have experienced your justice in many cases in our lives already. And we thank you and praise you for your walk with us, your presence with us, and the gift of your Holy Spirit who never leaves us. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we close our service this morning, our hymn of invitation, I Surrender All, let us stand together as we sing just the first verse. have not been at the top of our list today for our worship service. So fortunately, you knew most of them anyway, and I appreciate that. As we close our service, just a reminder, uh, we're going to ask everyone to please leave the sanctuary because at 1030, when we come back for our church conference, everybody will have to sign in. If you're a member, you'll sign in at this door and you'll sit on this side Non-members, visitors, uh, sign in at that door and sit on this side. And then our district superintendent will have uh, the bar for the vote for our church conference. So uh, again, please, everybody, exit the sanctuary. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen.